Hello again, it's Jimmy Herod O'Reilly, mobile mechanic, and I have here a Jaguar XF. Uh, let's start up here. Yeah. So we've got the engine light on, it's in limp mode. Exhaust fluid is low, it's not saying there's a fault there with that, that's the ABLU uh, fluid. I tend to say it's the exhaust filter full. So I've got here the launch Eurotab 3. Uh, it's just a new diagnostic scan tool I've just got. Uh, let's go to the ECM. We've got four codes there. Let's go in and read them. So we've got a NOX exceedance code, which can be a variety of different things. Low add blue, empty add blue tank, blocked add blue injector, uh, dodgy NOX sensors. On these Jaguar and Range Rovers, I always notice it's either just a low fluid or a blocked injector that causes that code. Particle filter soot restriction, again, that can be triggered because of this. And there you have the conditions incorrect. That means there's something wrong with one of these, which is stopping the um, DPF from regenerating. Then we have the PO23477 turbo overboost. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, we replaced the uh, oil separator and clean up the throttle body. Now, cleaning the throttle body is not always 100% cure. I've had a bit of a mixed response from that. Uh, maybe 50-50%, 60% saying that um, it's worked. But some of them, they do come back after a while and they end up having to change the throttle body. So. A safer option for this one would be to replace the throttle body with the boost sensor on top of it. Um, if not, you can just try cleaning it and go from there. So this customer wants me to try and clean it because he can't get hold of one at the moment. And if it comes back, we can replace it at a later time. So the engine cover off, we have this engine 3 liter TD6, TDV6. Got a couple of clips here and stuff that we need to remove to get into the throttle body. On this is a little bit different to the discoveries. So we've got two little bolts here, one either side. We'll just move that out so we can pull the intercooler back slightly and allow us to pull this section away from the throttle body. Seven millimeter clip here. So that's getting stuck, which it shouldn't do. So I hope you can see the screen there. So what I'm going to do is go to the special function, maintenance, uh, powertrain, engine control module. And we're going to find the throttle valve actuator. Just press that to do an adaption on it. Let's just see how it moves. You can see it moving in and out. So what I'm doing, I'm just going all the way around the flap. Just giving it a rub. All the way around, nice and smooth, nice and even. You don't want to just take, you know, pieces out of it. Just give it a nice rub all the way around, nice and nice and even, so you're taking the correct amount off just a little bit around there. So what happens is this is plastic, it gets hot. It, the plastic swells up slightly over time and it just catches on the body there and uh, makes it get stuck. Uh, so once we file this down, we'll do an adaption again push it in and out with our finger, make sure it's not getting stuck and hopefully that is uh, going to be a fix. So after a few minutes of uh, cleaning, uh, what you do is uh, hold down the, the bottom of it just like that so you can get the file along the top section there of the, the uh, flap. But now you can see, no matter how much we press it down, it's not getting stuck so you're not going to have intermittent issues there with that. Now we can just uh, get our finger in there, just, just clear out the uh, dust that came off. 
so yeah like I said before if you've seen some of my videos this does work maybe 60-70% of the time sometimes maybe less it really depends I think it's kind of hit and miss whether or not uh, that fixes your problem uh, I think because obviously once they start getting stuck maybe some of them it can damage the motor uh, or whatever um, what a lot I always like to like to do is after you finish make sure and do the adaptions um, I had a couple of that sort of came back and said no it's the problem was still there so we ended up changing the the actual throttle body itself but uh, the other one I had was I had a, another guy with this one of these um, Jaguars and he went back to Jaguar himself they changed the whole particle filter they changed the turbo uh, they changed the throttle body and the fault was still there so around about £10,000 later the one problem one fixed we changed this oil separator over here which fixed the problem uh, this one's already been changed uh, last week here by the customer himself uh, so now we've got that sorted and the oil separator is changed next thing we're doing is to clean the boost sensor take that out it's one little t25 screw there you can see that's blocked over there completely so if you spray some brake cleaner on it to loosen that up and get a little pick short pick you don't want to put a pick that reaches all the way down to the to the filament inside you just want a short little pick here just to pull off the carbon off the top just like that just get rid of that blockage so you can see the hole so we've taken all the carbon out just use a bit of brake cleaner there to clean it out now you need to just wait till that dries before you plug it back in and switch the ignition on so we've cleared the boost fault that was for the throttle body um we've cleared all the codes and these are the two ones that are staying here the nox exceedance we're going to try and clean the adblue injector out and fill up the adblue tank um if you don't refill the tank completely on these jaguar land rovers sometimes this code just won't clear and you fill the tank up and the code disappears on its own but uh, we'll give that a try now so we've got some adblue here we're going to top it up Okay, now we can clear that code. And now we're just left with the particle filter. Just under the car. Slide that down there. So what that is, is the DPF pressure sensor. Just there, we've taken off the clip. All right, just there. On this side, it's this tube that runs along the front exhaust pipe there, uh, EGR cooler pipe. So we're going to disconnect that from the sensor and we'll get a DPF cleaning fluid hooked up to that and get the cleaner put in there. Okay, so we're going to fill this DPF cl cleaning gun up and we're filling up with this fluid here from Launch UK, uh, launchtech.co.uk if you're in England. Um, you can buy that on that website and the gun here for it. So we're going to fill that up into here, connect it to the compressor here and get it squeezed into the DPF through the DPF pressure hose. So there's all set up and we're going to climb under there and get it in. So we've got that connected up. Squeeze the trigger. Now we're over to the passenger side. It's a four millimeter hex. Get all the way out. So this is the passenger side of the vehicle. And we have the add blue injector here. I'll just move that clip and just spread it open a little bit. We should just be able to pull off the injector there. And we need to clear off all that white scale so it can uh, get a nice even spray coming out of there and again just use a little pick just to scrape it all out yeah 
you can just spray a little bit of brake cleaner or water in there and when it's cleaned it should look something like that. Okay, that's the AdBlue injector cleaned out from the passenger side underneath there. The throttle body has been cleaned out from here and the DPF pressure sensor there is just under the driver's side up by the gearbox. Now we'll just get the diagnostics reconnected because the ignition was off. Annoyingly on this one, it doesn't say what sort of units that's measuring that in. So I take it it's uh, KPA, which would be like 140 millibars. So hopefully we'll see that coming down. This is the maximum revs here. And you'll see some smoke coming out of the rear uh, tailpipe there. Okay, so pressure is now down to zero from 10 to zero. So that's a good result. So now we've got this pressure down. We need to get the grams of soot mass down to zero as well. Now that can be done by either doing a forced regeneration or now that we've got the pressure down to zero, as long as your pressure is down back down to zero, you can just do a reset on that. So we'll switch the engine off, ignition on, and we'll exit out of there. Go to special functions. Uh, are we in? I don't know if we can do DPF from here. Let's have a look. Okay, we have injection pump prime, diesel particle filter regeneration. So we want to reset the catalyst, catalyst reduction quality monitor anyway, so we're going to do that one. Turn the ignition off. Turn the ignition on. Press OK. Switch the ignition back off. And now it should be complete. There you go. So that's that one. Switch the ignition back on again. So we now need to do as well the throttle valve. Reset that. Do the adaptions on it. So that, what that's doing again is it's opening the throttle valve, seeing how far it can open before it feels resistance and just sets it. So again, ignition off, ignition on, press OK. And that's successful. So I always like to avoid trying to do a regeneration, so I'm going to go back out of here. It doesn't give me the option in there to uh, just replace the DPF, so... Go into this other section, I'm going into common special function, exhaust emission. Oh, some lost connection there somehow for a reason. All right, please start again. Oh, something's happened there. So, all right, we'll restart that. So, we don't seem to have it in here either. Uh, we'll just have a little look around elsewhere. Sometimes it's just in different pathways. And we've also got turbo calibration here, so while we're here, we might as well just press that uh, turbo and shut off. No, we're not looking at that. Let's just, I thought I was just going to do some sort of a reset on the calibrations or something. So, add blue reset to steering exhaust emission. Well, that's pretty annoying. We haven't got the reset procedure there for it. I've done loads of these before. I don't know why it's not here now. Uh, maybe you need to go back to some of the older software, but... Uh, as we're here, we'll just go back in. It's not going to be much of a regeneration anyway. Should be finished within a couple of minutes. Let's 
start the engine. So we've got 30 grams, we'll take it for a little drive and we should get that down to zero or below six. Anything below six is fine, but we'll try and get as low as we can. Oh, well actually we haven't even moved anywhere and it's just came up with a message saying that it's uh, fine so we can turn off the ignition. Let's just see what happens. Well, it says it's successful. Uh, let's go back and read the live data. Particle filter soot mass. And we're still at 30 grams, so that hasn't reset that. I'm going to go back into the software, the, the tool, and see if I can find Jaguar. Now I'm going to just see if I can change the software. Okay, so after a couple of miles of driving, it's now down to six, which is where it needs to be. So it's going to tell us to switch off the ignition. Now that's successful. Now if we go back into the code, when we tried to clear that earlier, it didn't clear, but it should clear now. There you go. Go to the data stream. Start the vehicle back up. So we've got zero differential pressure and 4.7 grams of soot. So on our test drive now you can see the power is back. We've got boost working. Full revs. If we look on live data while the car is moving you can see that the uh, grams of soot are reducing on their own now. So the car is, is regenerating its own self. It's cleaning the soot on its own accord. So that's it, uh, boost is back, power is back, the engine management light's gone. The car is now lowering the soot on its own. It's, it's still dropping there. If we read the fault codes, they're still gone. So all looks good. Okay, so that's all done. See you in the next video.